There's been a lot of times when I've had trouble getting a rig to work the way I want it to. Or times that I just spent way too long with something, not knowing there was a simple thing I could have done to make it so much easier. And so today I figured I'd show some of the most useful tricks I've learned to be able to get these rigs to work the way I want them to. And just some useful things that it's possible you might not know. First of all, if you're making a more realistic character, or with a mesh that's mostly attached, then you probably want to go with automatic weights when parenting. But if it's more of a low poly thing, or has many different parts, it might not work correctly. This is because it will try to automatically assign the weights to the parts that the bones are closest to. And if there are a lot of them, it probably won't work right. Instead, use empty groups, then manually assign the weight to each bone. To do this, just select the part of the mesh you want, then after you've parented it, click assign with the bone you want selected in vertex groups. You can also use weight painting. With this, you can just paint on how much of that bone will control that part of the mesh. You can also enable this option here to see their weight. Knowing how to correctly apply weights to meshes is very important for making good rigs. But now let's get into some of the more trickier things, such as the modifiers. The first modifier I like is the stretch 2 modifier. This is of course good for anything that needs to stretch, but it's also good for things like making a bouncy ball, or just exaggerating a character's movement. To use it, first add the stretch 2 modifier in bone constraints. Next, select the rig, then the bone you want to stretch to. You can also make something stretchy by using the maintain volume bone constraint. I haven't used this as much as I don't feel like I have as much control with it, but I'm sure there are many uses for it. Also, if you want to make a bone a bit more bendy, just increase the slider in bendy bones. This is good for making that bone have a bit more flexibility without having to add more bones. But with this bunny character thing, I didn't want to add more bones into the ears, so I just increased the bendy bone slider, and now the ears bend a little bit, but doesn't make the rig any more complicated. Next, for a simple propeller or wheel movement, I like to just have the blade or wheels all parented to a single bone, that when you rotate it, rotates all the wheels or propellers. I've seen people make far more complicated wheel and car rigs, but for me, I found this to work just fine. This is how I was able to animate this train's wheels without having to manually move every single wheel, which would have been crazy. Another thing that's useful to know is if you want to attach a rig to another rig, use a child of bone constraint on the rig you want to attach. Then select the rig you want to attach it to. You can also choose exactly which bone you want, then control the influence of it. This is great for animating a character picking up something or like attaching a helmet or a piece of gear that might come off at some point. It's also good for dealing with strange characters that might have multiple parts that come apart or something. Another useful thing to know is about the Rigify add-on. I'm not going to get into it right now because it's a bit complicated, but basically by going into preferences and then add-ons, you can enable the Rigify add-on. This can be good for just starting with some base rigs, but it's also good for just generating rigs that are easier to use and nice to look at. But probably one of the most important modifiers to know about is inverse kinematics, which allows you to get movement like this. This one is definitely a bit trickier to set up, but it's far more used than any of the other ones. To use it, first add the inverse kinematics in bone constraints, then select the rig, and select the bone you want it to follow. Make sure that that bone is not attached or it will not work properly. You may also want to increase the chain length to stop it from affecting the rest of the mesh. You can also add a bone to be used as the pole. Just select the rig, then select the bone you want to use, and now it will kind of bend towards that bone. This is great for making something like a leg to keep it from bending in weird directions. Now, that's just the basics of inverse kinematics, and they can be used in a lot more different ways, like making mechanical looking gears or realistic movement. Almost every single rig I've made has used inverse kinematics in some sort of way. It's just very useful. 
Finally, it's helpful to use bone layers to separate which bones you are animating versus which bones to ignore. Just select the bone you want, then press M to move them to a different layer. Of course, there are a lot more modifiers and ways of making rigs, but I felt as though these were more than important ones to know.